Hello and welcome to the show. Now, when that hammer falls at auction and you've made that winning bid, it's an amazing feeling. Yeah, but once the reality starts to set in and you get the keys, the real work begins. But lots of people still do buy their homes under the hammer. mentioned this a few times but preparation really is the key before buying at auction yes and that's not just viewing the property beforehand and read the legal pack it's setting a limit on your budget yeah let's hope today's buyers took that advice on board let's find out what they bought I'm sizing up this mixed-use premises in Pembrokeshire using some unconventional methods here I go across over to this side Meanwhile, there's no measuring the time. This boiler's been in action at this London maisonette. That looks particularly archaic. Yikes. And I'm flexing my builder's vocabulary at this three-bed semi in Birmingham. This is what's known in the subsidence world as a belter off a crack. 310. All of these properties have been sold at auction and we'll find out who bought them and what they paid for them when they went under the hammer. Just there, sir. Today I'm in Haverford West in South West Wales. This picturesque town sits on the far western tip of Wales and is over an hour from Swansea and two from Cardiff. Its attractive riverfront properties and period cottages attract both local buyers and holiday homers seeking a peaceful peace of this tranquil corner of the Welsh countryside. It might be dull and gloomy here in Haverford West, but what's not dull and gloomy are those beautifully coloured houses across the road. Very, very pretty. The property I'm here to see has commercial downstairs and a two-bed flat upstairs. A unit on that side and a unit on this side. It's got a guide price of £69,000 plus, and I'm intrigued. Let's have a look. Now, this property was once upon a time a four-bed house. So the question is, what kind of commercial property has it been since? Ah, a shop. Right. Let's see what they've got to offer. No phones on the cable. No enough cable at home. Not my kind of shop. Joking aside, look at the size of this place. Obviously, was a shop back in the day. You've got more commercial space on that side of the hallway as well, which I know was a hairdresser's. Big question is, with commercial units like this that are downstairs, what do you do with it? Do you keep it as a commercial unit? This one's empty. This one obviously hasn't worked. And I'm thinking, if you try again, is it going to work? I don't know. It's always a gamble. Or I know there's a flat upstairs, a two-bed flat upstairs. Do you keep that one upstairs as a two-bed flat and make this one into a two-bed flat, so you've got two separate abodes. You'd have to get change of use here to residential, but I'm pretty sure that should be pretty straightforward. Or do you go back to its original four-bed house, centre of town? I'm not sure if that would work, but I've given you three options there. The choice is endless. What I'm not happy about is the choice in the shop. The state of the commercial space does suggest that in its current configuration, this building has got to the end of its shelf life. But despite those empty shelves, I think on further investigation, you're actually spoilt for choice. Wow. Not only do you get all that space in there, you actually get this quite substantial sized outbuilding. And you get a garden as well. And look at the size of the garden. That's got to be 25, 30 metres. This is a bonus, and it could make the four-bed option more likely. A family-sized house with a family-sized garden. But even if you went down the two-flats option, it could still work, either splitting it or just giving the ground floor its own exclusive access. Choice is definitely a running theme with this property. 
And you know what? If this place works for you and you make a little bit of profit, you've got somewhere safe to put it. Safest houses? Well, maybe, but the flats could be the safer option, financially speaking. Even more investigation is needed before I make my mind up. So as I'm getting to the top of the stairs, it does feel a little bit dark and dingy up here. But before you get to the landing, you hit the family bathroom. And it's a good-sized family bathroom, actually, to be honest with you, but it's dated, it's very old-fashioned, and I'd want to rip that out, retile and put a brand new bathroom suite in there. But it's not a bad size, all the same. Last two steps before I get to the main landing and you hit the kitchen. Now, to me, that kitchen looks OK. The cupboards look OK. The sinks, you've got a nice big window looking out to the back of the property, across the hallway. Here, OK, yeah, I'm guessing these are the two bedrooms. Bigger bedroom to my left, it has got some wardrobes in which seem to be taking up a lot of space. This is a bedroom too, a little bit smaller, but, you know, there's space there you can work with. And as I'm walking through this flat, I'm looking at these, uh, these door frames, and they all seem a little bit screw -if. I wish I had a spirit level here. If you can see here, and I go across over to this side, and go back to this side, they're not quite flush, not quite straight. As a two-bedroom flat, this would be the lounge area. It's not huge, but, you know, the more I walk around this place, I'm getting a feel for it now. And I'm thinking to myself, four-bed house, I'm not feeling it. What I am feeling is a flat up here, maybe a flat downstairs. Two separate flats. Or you keep this as it is, and you keep the commercial units downstairs. I really don't think a house will maximise your return and it would be a lot of work to get it back to what it would be, a very large house. But does a local estate agent think my gut instincts are right for this property guided at 69 grand plus? I would probably want to convert the property into two two-bedroom flats. Uh, there are quite a lot of private rented flats in the area and that seems to be the most popular course for properties here. Good on you, but do the numbers back it up for a property that was guided at £69,000 plus. In this location, a two-bedroom flat should achieve round about £70,000. On the sales market, in a good condition, a four-bedroom property this size would achieve approximately £120,000. So two flats at £70,000 apiece would increase your pre-tax profit by £20,000. Rental-wise, they would bring in a total of £850 per calendar month, as opposed to £625 per calendar month for a four-bed house. So this certainly looks like the best option, but could keeping the commercial space and one flat trump the two flat values. In the current climate, uh, an individual commercial unit of around this size is probably getting around about £650 per calendar month. That would give a slight increase in potential rental returns. Well, that's depending on finding a business that wants the space, which might not be as easy as finding a tenant for a flat. The challenge with a project like this is, what do you do with it? There's so much choice. Good thing about that is the choice is yours to make this whatever you want it to be. My favourite part of this building is the guide price. You're getting a lot for your money. Let's find out who was shopping for a bargain when he went under the hammer. Um, so we've got a double front in Mid Terrace property. It's a mixed commercial and residential use. It comprises currently of two former commercial units on the ground floor. Good size two bedroom flat above. Do I see 69,000 start things going? Do I see 69? Thank you, 69, 70. Now I'm looking for. I'm looking for 70,000. 70, thank you. 70, 71. 71, thank you. 72. 72, 73. 73, 74. 74, 75. 75, thanks. Thank you. 75. Are you coming back in, sir? I've got 75,000. I can sell a 75,000. You sure? Sold to you, sir, 75,000. And so 75 grand was the price paid by Cardiff-based teacher 
Gareth, who bought the property with his wife, Geraldine. Gareth is a PE teacher, and I met him back at his Haverford West property to hopefully find out what he thought would be the right answer to this multiple-choice building. Gareth, nice to meet you. Hello. Congratulations, pal. Thank you. Uh, you've got yourself a big old unit here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what were you thinking? Daunting. What were you thinking? Myself and my wife were looking for um, a property to do up and resell, or potentially to rent. Uh, it's a little bit far from where we live for renting. Um, but we came down, had a look at it, and we saw a lot of potential in the building. Yeah, is this a, a, a new thing that you're doing? Is this your first project? Yes, it's the first house we've bought in an auction. Hold on a minute. This is the very the first very one first. that you're going to be tackling. It's huge. Yeah, yeah. It's huge. A bit daunting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, like a challenge. <laughs> you've got um, one. Yeah. You've definitely yeah, got one. I, you know, I, in my late teens and early 20s, I did a lot of building site work in the summers. Mm. Um, so, I've got a little bit of experience, but. You know, for the technical stuff. Yeah, like you bring bring friends in and stuff. Okay. Right, Gal, tell me what you're going to do with this building. Well, our initial decision um, idea is to turn it back to a four bedroom, but if when we get some people in mm. and get some advice on it, if they say actually it'd be much easier, much more cost effective to keep it um, as a commercial unit uh. or maybe even flats. Um, yeah, we might, we might go down that route. We're quite quite flexible mm. at the moment. Okay. So, like me, he hasn't totally nailed his colours to the mast on this first property purchase, which also makes his budget a bit vague. He was thinking £25,000-ish if he was going to convert it back to a four-bed house and a three- to four-month timescale, but exploring the options could change all that. You've got to be excited, though, with this being your first project. Whose yeah, idea yeah. was this? Was this yours or your missus? Or? Um, joint, joint decision. Um, we had a... Uh, a little bit of savings aside and stuff, and uh, we thought, let's do something with it, you know. Uh, hopefully turn it into... More. More savings, <laughs> more savings for, before the children go off to university or of off travelling, whatever they want to do. So yeah. first choice is a four-bed house? Bedroom, yeah. Second choice in your mind would be flats and commercial? Potentially, yes. Potentially, yeah. but you're happy to take advice? Happy to take advice and whichever is... Not so much the least amount of work, which, which, which is going to give us the, the yeah. best profit at the end. <laughs> Good luck, Gareth. Yeah, Hope it works much. out. Cheers. So, for a first project, Gareth is starting big. You could say there's a fair amount of work that needs to be done here. If I was him, I'd start with the electrics. The big question for me is, what's he going to finish up with here? Is it going to be a four-bed house? Is it going to be residential upstairs, commercial down here? Gareth doesn't know, but you can find out later in the programme. I was actually five hours late, though. Oh. Situated about nine miles southwest of the centre of London, the suburb of Rains Park has been very popular with commuters since the first railway was built in the mid 19th century. The train station must be one of the busiest in the country. There are over 200 trains every day that will take you to Waterloo Station, so you've got no excuse for being late for work. I'm always late, I'm always late. Well, Rains Park is slightly in the shadow of neighbouring Wimbledon, but you do get slightly more for your money here, and you've still got access to great facilities, and it's only 20 minutes into the centre of London. So, a three-bedroomed maisonette for a guide price of 295,000 quid has got to be worth a look. Now, if the word maisonette conjures up a boxy 1960s block, hold on to your hat. Wow, look at that. I was not expecting that. It seems to go on for absolutely ages back there. We'll explore that in a minute, but bedrooms and kitchens and toilets and things back there are that way, I imagine. Uh, one of the bedrooms here is a really nice size. Uh, I love seeing doors like this. They are obviously covered in years of paint. We get those stripped back, absolutely brilliant. And, uh, and whenever you're looking around older houses and you see things like this, it's just... It doesn't cost you anything, it's there, it's already something just waiting to be discovered. So get that stripped and you've got a beautiful feature, I bet the floors are the same. And look at this room, amazing, this is your lounge. 
nice sized ceilings. Uh, we've got the big bay window there. Um, okay, it's a bit tired and the wallpaper, you've got to see through all that. It's a really <laughs> almost unbelievably big, big flat. The master bedroom next door is also huge with an Art Nouveau fireplace. I love it. Further along the corridor, the smaller bedroom is an odd shape. But again, I do like the period fireplace. And this room, which may be the last of the three beds, but looks like it's been used as a dining room. Well, one thing you are going to have to spend some money on in this place is a new boiler. That looks particularly archaic. Yikes. And then look at this. What a sideboard. <sighs> nice bit of oak or whatever it is. What do you think it is, though? Very strange kind of angular bit at one end. Place to put your ironing board, maybe, at this side. No, 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 no. Uh, this is a purpose-built maisonette, and you know what? Those are the stairs out to the back garden. It's not a huge garden, but a garden it certainly is. Now, it all starts to go a little bit wrong at this point, though, because this is the kitchen, and as you can see, it is absolutely tiny. Obviously, open that up if you can. Um, toilet, bathroom, love the colour. Never seen one that colour, ever, ever, ever. I absolutely love it. That has to stay. Or not. I think it's my new obsession. Well, I wouldn't get too obsessed with changing the pink bathroom just yet, because this is a leasehold flat, so some works and alterations may need to be approved by the freeholder. And when it comes to the lease, ah, that's not the worst bit. This house comes with a really short lease, 33 years. What does it matter? Well, in 33 years, if you don't do something about it, it's not your house anymore. So what can you do to stop a property reverting back to the freeholder? Well, you need a solicitor to serve a Section 42. This initiates a claim to extend the lease by a further 90 years. And as this has already been done by the sellers, it means the purchaser can start negotiations right away. The new owner will have to pay a premium that reflects the decrease in value of the freeholder's interest. Get a specialist surveyor to advise on a figure. Talking of figures, what does a local estate agent make of this maisonette guided at £290,000? My first impressions of this property is it's on a very highly desirable road. It's a period maisonette. It needs a bit of work, but it's got a lot of potential. And what do these types of properties normally sell for in this area? As a three bed with a new lease, we would market this property anywhere between £600 and £625,000. Wow, even with the renovation costs, that large gap between the guide and top sales price could give you a flavour of just how important that lease extension is. What could it rent for? This property would rent from anywhere between £1,700 and £1,800 per calendar month. So it was all looking so swimmingly marvellous and then we discovered about the lease. That really does throw a massive, great... Spannering the property works. Mm, something to definitely buyer beware. Still, let's see who bought it when it went under the hammer. Start at 300 on this. Those sort of purpose-built flats going for an awful lot more than this. 300, Rains Park. 300. 305 anywhere. 305. 310. Sitting down. Sorry, I lost you. 310. 315. 315, 320. That short lease really narrowed the field for this one, and bidding was slow but steady. We rejoined with the price at £384,000. 384, 384 back in, 385, 386. One more go over 385, 386. Yeah? 387, you're all very close. 388, you're close, 388. You haven't got, you're just nearly there, 388. You'll regret it. Uh, 387, first time, second time, third and last time. Have you all done? Sold 387. Goodbye, well done. Out of view of our camera was Amal, who made that successful bid. She's a hotelier by occupation and came along with son Omar, whose job as project manager in the construction industry may come in handy. Omar, Amal, lovely to meet you both. Lovely nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. 
So tell me why you wanted to buy this flat. It's a good investment, it's a good area. And I'm so impressed with Homes Under the Hammer. Ah! It triggered me on. Did it? <laughs> yes, it did. So have you bought other ones before this, or is this the first? No, this is the first. Thing. Really? Mm. But we inspired you. You have inspired me, yes. Good, well, I hope it turns out all right. <laughs> what was it about this particular flat that you liked? Well, I think the, the size of the flat is quite unique, yeah. over 1,000 square foot. Yeah. Uh, looking at the flat, it looks quite a simple refurb as well. There's, structurally, that doesn't seem to be too many issues. Uh, so luckily for my mum, I'm going to do this for free. <laughs> oh, are you? Yes. Yeah, so I'm going to have the pleasure and share of managing profits. it. Ah, okay. well, uh, yeah, that would be nice. Um, so what's the plans for this place? For this, um, well, until we get the lease sorted out, um, I think we'll just do it up a bit, make it look presentable and maybe rent it out and get some income because I think the lease is going to be a bit more than what we had hoped. And you're working towards that? Yes, we are. So if you couldn't get the lease extended then, in 30 years, this property isn't yours anymore, is it? That's right, 33. 33 years it's not yours anymore. Um, the worst case scenario is that, is it? Or do you think you'll manage to come to some agreement? No, I think we'll manage to come to some agreement. And then, in terms of the refurbishment of the flat, what's, what's the plan once you've got all that sorted? I think the plan is to try and make it as simple as possible until we sort out the lease. So we can strip out the carpet, maybe put some laminate flooring, uh, take off this uh, hideous wallpaper and I think just put a fresh coat of paint. Um, and then we already have chandeliers in every room. Yeah, so yes, yes, lovely. Yes. Exactly, yeah. So we don't need to create a false ceiling <laughs> or whatever. We can just literally change the chandeliers for something and new. And put a, a nicer kitchen, you know, yeah. a more appropriate modern kitchen. Okay. You can mm. get them quite cheap now. Yeah, yeah. This is until the lease is sorted out. Will you do another refurbishment on it? Yes, that would be stage two, complete refurb. And what would that involve? Uh, I think creating, because these walls are structural, um, but I think we're, we plan to create an opening in one of the walls, make one of the bedrooms en suite with the bathroom. Yes. Right. So what's the budget? For the first stage, I'm hoping to do it very, very cheaply. OK. I don't know, maybe, do you think we could do it for under 10? Under 10? Uh, no, Seven? not at all. If you're re-plumbing and stuff, I no, think... No, I'm not re-plumbing, I'm I, not re-plumbing. You'll have to change some of the toys. I'll, ch I'll change the bathroom because it's leaking already. Uh, okay. I think, that you're not buying a handbag, I think around 20 to 25. Right, uh, and that's for the first it. version. First stage. Well, we haven't so. quite gotten to that yet. <laughs> So, some initial squabbles. <laughs> do, um, do you buy expensive handbags? Sometimes. You, sometimes you do. <laughs> What's the most expensive handbag you've ever bought? Three and a half. Three and a half thousand pounds. For a handbag? No, I don't get it either. I don't get these handbags. Wow, but... well, you know what? Yeah, but, but it's a piece. It lasts forever. Ah. It's an investment. It's yes. like a diamond. Until she right. loses it, of course. <laughs> yeah. The handbags and the bread that's your granddad. Sweat so you Kidding aside, Amal knows her investment handbags and she also knows quite a bit about budgeting, having recently refurbished her family's hotel. I've had to work to a budget okay. because I was doing it out of the cash flow. I okay. didn't borrow any money. Oh, well, well done. Yeah, so I've, I, I know where to get tiles, bathroom units, you get X display units, things like that. In addition to the 20 to 25,000 pounds needed for phase one, Omar's construction experience tells him that will stretch to a further 25 grand once the lease is extended. The timescale is more difficult to predict, but depends on how negotiations progress with the leaseholder. But they're hoping the whole project won't take longer than six months. I mean, this collaboration, you know, will go one of two ways. It'll be a complete disaster, or it could work quite well. Yeah. Um, if it works well, will you Carry do more on. together? Oh, yes, yes. Like the idea? I mean, yes. it seems like you're pretty, pretty lucky to have a son who's so well qualified. He is very well qualified, yes. And people like him. Uh, yeah, well, he's a nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can be. They I trust him. <laughs> they trust him. OK, well, that's good. Lovely to meet you both. Lovely meeting you as Take well. Take care. Thank you. Good luck with it. Thank you very <laughs> we'll much. See how you get on. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Well, buying a property with a short lease does come with a potential whole heap of problems, as you may be aware, and as Omar and Amal are finding out. So, how many handbags worth of renovation costs will there be? <laughs> you can find out when we come back later in the show. 
still to come, I'm dealing with some unwanted guests at this three-bed house in Birmingham. So you've got these little pinpricks which tell you this place is rife with Tweedburn. And we'll find out if Amal and Omar were the perfect mother and son duo. Never work with your mum again. <laughs> Time to take a trip back to South Wales, where I first saw this property that had a lot of potential. The ground floor was commercial space, with one side being a former shop and the other side was a hairdresser's. So there may have been an argument for keeping the commercial space as was. Or, I know there's a flat upstairs, a two-bed flat upstairs. Do you keep that one upstairs as a two-bed flat and make this one into a two-bed flat? Or do you go back to its original? four-bed house, the choice is endless. And the person who decided to purchase the property for 75 grand was Gareth. He's a PE teacher who was taking his first plunge into the property developing world. This huge building was no easy job. One of the biggest decisions was what is he going to do with it? Our initial decision um, idea is to turn it back to a four-bedroom, but if when we get some people in mm. and get some advice on it, if they say, actually, it'd be much easier, much more cost-effective to keep it um, as a commercial unit uh. or maybe even flats, um, yeah. we, might, we might go down that road. We're quite, quite flexible at the moment. OK. So there were plenty of options and plenty of potential obstacles that could trip up first-time property developer Gareth. Not least planning permission to change the use into residential, if indeed that's what he decided to do. So it's time to find out what exactly has happened. We've returned eight months later. It's gone from check out to check this out. Gareth decided to make one big family home. The former shop is now the living room with a superb kitchen diner off it. This new skylight is a great addition. And next door in the former salon are more big changes. There's a downstairs toilet with a shower and another reception room next door. Planning permission for the end use was granted, but with the proviso that the front lower windows were of a sash construction. Upstairs now has four bedrooms one of which was created by removing the former flat's kitchen. Gareth decided against doing much work in the bathroom, but with all the other work that's been going on, I don't really blame him. It's taken twice as long as he first thought, but the fact that he lives two hours away in Cardiff couldn't have made this first renovation for him very easy. From the, the get-go, um, we decided that I would be here three, four days a week, um, hands-on, labouring for whatever tradesman we had. Um, I was very lucky, found a local tradesman who was semi-retired, and he was excellent. But being here with... Uh, Especially in the winter when we had no hot water or uh, heating. Um, yeah, that was a bit of a challenge. And sleeping in the smallest room in the house is just so insane warm. But um, yeah, it's, um, so it's, been, it's been an education as well as a, a little bit of an adventure. Lessons learned for Gareth and wife Geraldine. They did have a provisional budget of 25 grand to convert it into a four bed house. But have they managed to stick to it? We've gone a little bit over that, but it's 35 to 40. Uh, but first time we've done this, I think we're a little bit naive um, in the budgeting. Yeah, we'll uh, have to wait and see now to whether we reap the benefits at the end. Fingers crossed, but now the work on the house is complete. Have they decided if they will be selling the house on or keeping it as a long-term investment? Having put all the work in and mainly falling in love with the house and how it's turned out and the neighbours are lovely, the, the area's lovely. Um, we're a little bit loath to get rid of it, so we are, once we've had the valuation, we are going to look at the potential of renting. 
um, see if we can if we can do it. Um, if not, then yeah, we will put it on the market. Um, see what we can get for it. Well, let's find out just that. We've asked along two local estate agents to give us their opinions of the house. First, let's hear from the agent who saw it last time. I think the decision to take away the commercial is a really good idea. Um, we've got quite a lot of empty commercial properties in the town and we are struggling to fill those. But people, they either want a property that they can do all the work themselves or they want a property that's really nicely finished and I think that's what they've got here is a really nice finish. I think they've done a great job actually. I think for me, as soon as I came in, it's this open plan kitchen living space. It's great actually. To get sort of a little bit more money, I think perhaps if they would have perhaps done, done sort of a new bar from upstairs, because I think they've done so much work here and downstairs looks great. And I just think when you go upstairs, it feels like it hasn't been touched as much. But lots of people like to come in and put their own stamp on things anyway. So perhaps maybe that's what the buyers might do. What could Gareth's £115,000 investment get on the open market? Because of the lack of parking, uh, it's, it's restricted, really, as to who might be interested in the property. I think we'd probably put it on the market round about £170,000, uh, with a view to get in between £155,000 and £165,000 for it. We'd love to sort of market the property around £190,000 and perhaps try to agree a sort of a sale in excess of £180,000. Well, there's a little bit of uh, variety there, a bit of a range, but uh, pleased with both of them. Variable they are, but the lowest means a potential profit of something between fifty and £65,000 before deducting taxes and fees, which is pretty good for a first renovation. But he's keen to hang on to the house, and the agents think he could get £650 per calendar month, which would give him a 7% yield. So now the valuations are in. What will Gareth and Geraldine do with this lovely house? It's something we'll have to mull over. It's been a long eight and a half months, but on the whole, I think, yeah, it's, it's turned out... I'm really pleased with how it's turned out, and we'd love to move you. But it's an investment, and whether we decide to sell or rent, uh, I think it's definitely given us a taste for doing it again. This is the famous Spaghetti Junction, Birmingham's gateway to the M6. Close by sits Erdington, a popular residential area that boasts actor Martin Shaw as one of its most famous sons. One of his famous roles was in the 1970 series The Professionals. And our next property is certainly crying out for some professional help. The property I'm here to see has got me slightly befuddled because it seems, it seems too good to be true. First of all, let me give you the facts. We're just around four miles from Birmingham city centre. The M6 is close by, public transport links are good and a recent Ofsted report said the schools in the area are good too. This, well, this is it. It's a three bedroom semi-detached with a guide price of just £25,000. Even more confusingly, it sold for just under a year ago for 85,000, it doesn't make sense. Until I look at it, look at this. The soil's bursting at the seams. This retainer wall's not doing much retaining and that could really affect the house. And yes, this is what's known in the subsidence world as a belter off a crack. Look at that crack, that's really worrying. Concerning, yes, but it does seem to be on this front of porch extension for the time being. One for the professionals to check out. Through to a little vestibule area. I think it's safe to say you need some new windows and doors. And then through to a beautiful reception room. It's not a bad reception room. It's got nice lights coming in. It's bright, it's airy. You've got some red bricks off what was a fireplace. But it's gone, as is just about everything else. The polystyrene ceiling needs to come off. We don't have double glazing. The floorboards have been ripped up in places. And then, I've never seen this before, you've got wallpaper straight on top of the bricks. 
Ah, now whereas I saw the potential in the reception room with the light flooding in here, not so much. This kitchen, well, everything's been taken out. Even the copper pipes, somebody's taken them, but even they didn't want that really dirty cooker and fridge. Now, the configuration here is all wrong. You've got the bathroom just off a pokey kitchen. What you would be thinking about doing is taking this wall down. It is load bearing, so it's, it's a bit of a job, but it would open things up. You've got wallpaper on top of wallpaper, on top of wallpaper, and then round here, yeah, you've got a toilet. At least said the better about that. But I'm determined to find the positives. It's a nice day. Unfortunately, there are no positives to be found in the back garden. It's an overgrown mess populated by tree saplings, which will need cleared before the roots get too established. I wonder if things will be any better upstairs. Upstairs, I'm watching where I'm going, the place is full of holes. You have a very small bedroom and the floorboards are up here because, of course, somebody's taken those copper pipes and pulled them up. And what it has exposed is a real problem with woodworm. So you've got these little pinpricks which tell you this place is rife with woodworm. So just another thing to add to the to-do list into a bigger bedroom. It's a decent size. You've got the same problem with the floorboards. They've been pulled up for those copper pipes, need replacing. You've got a nice feature fireplace. It's just not where it should be because someone's ripped it out. Now that's what I call rubble. So someone has clearly made a stab at starting work in here. And walking around the house, the feeling I get is that it's just been, well, the cracks have been papered over over the decades. And when you do start exposing things, that's when the cracks appear. Literally, look at this. This is a real sign of movement, clearly been going for years. Could be a huge money eater to put that right. And looking around, everything needs done from your plastering, your windows, your electrics, absolutely everything. This property seems to have every problem imaginable. And even with that guide price of £25,000 for a good area, it's a bit scary. We asked a local estate agent how much this place might need to be put right. To get this property up to a livable standard, I would say it will cost £25,000. So, to values, when renovated, how much could this house make on the resale market? In the sales market, this could achieve £135,000. And rental? Once this property is complete, the rental you can achieve for this property is £725 per calendar month. On paper, this property is the sale of the century, but walking around it, it soon becomes apparent why that guide price is so low. There's so much needing done. But if you have the budget to play with, you could make this into the spectacular family home it maybe once was. Let's find out who agreed when it went under the hammer. Oh, again, I've got a poxy bid. £30,000 for lot 38. Do I hear 35, sir? Thank you. 35, 40 is proxy. 45, I've got 50, I've got proxy. 55 now, sir, I'll come back to you. 55 and the proxy is out. At the proxy uh, bids helped to get this lot off to a flyer. And surprisingly, the low guide price soon became a distant memory. We rejoined with the auctioneer looking for 88,000 pounds. 88, come back in, behind. I've got in the front, 86,000 pounds. I'll take 1,000 then at 86. Press bidder again, 87, 88, sir. You're not together, are you? No, 87,000 pounds. 87, standing on my left at 87,000 pounds. First time, second time, are you all done? Third and very last time, you're out of the back. The bid is just there, sir, 87,375. Paying a massive 63 grand over the guide price was Braham, who lives locally with his wife and two children. This is his first ever auction purchase, and he certainly jumped in at the deep end. I met him back at the house to find out more. Throw caution to the wind. Braham, congratulations. Thank you. Now, there's a lot of work to be done in this house. That's undeniable. But had you done your homework, you'd come to see it. 
when I went to the auction, I didn't visit the property, so I didn't know how, I just saw from the outside how it looks like, but I didn't see inside. So what did you think when you walked in? I was shocked. I was thinking boilers or electric or windows or that kind of things I was looking that don't need to do that. It's just maybe walls or that kind of thing. But when I saw that inside, it's everything so I have to do that. So you're in auction and you think, this is 25 grand, this is three bedrooms, yes. this is good. Yeah. So you start bidding and what did you get it for? It was 87 um, for auction, but after that, once I got my solicitor and everything, they were saying the seller, um, as per rider, seller cost. So it's nearly 10 grand I have to pay extra. There must have been a moment yes. where you were quite sad about it. Uh, yes, I was sad and uh, nightmare as well that how, uh, uh, what happened. But now I'm here, I'm positive, I'm going to do that. Take a deep breath and jump right in. Oh dear, not only does this house have everything you can imagine wrong with it, he's paid well over the guide, got stuck with fees and hadn't seen inside before bidding. Those homes under the hammer golden rules are golden rules for a reason. However, he has a really can-do attitude and sounds determined to make this a nice home for his wife and kids. The first plan is our to take off all the plasters, ripping that everything's. Double glaze all the windows and lamp, uh, double glaze uh, doors and everything will be fitted. Tomorrow, 8 o'clock, the guys will be here. Center heating, pipes and the refurbishing uh, electric wiring, the guy will come this week probably. And uh, kitchen, we're going to put that brand new kitchen. Downstairs bathroom, we are making downstairs bathroom. And then upstairs, new bathroom. Uh, make the separate wall inside the new bathroom as well. OK, there's a lot to do. Have you done this sort of thing before? No, this is my first time. All of that is a big job, but what worries me more is the actual foundations and stability of the house. Yes. You've seen the cracks. Have you investigated? Uh, we investigated. I called the builders as well, and they checked that walls. They said it's the base is fine. It's just a cracks because uh, the plasters and the outside is that extension. You don't need to worry about that because the base is safe. They said. What's your budget? The normally budget was twenty five thousand pounds, but I can't afford because I paid ten thousand pound. So my budget is gone to now fifteen. There's an awful lot of work to be done for yes. fifteen, isn't there? So my budget is gone down and is very tight. Wherever I can cut that, um, then I will cut, or probably I will do myself or family. I will ask my help as well. What is your time scale? When I bought this house, my time scale was eight weeks, but I don't think so because the builders of which I'm speaking with them, they are very busy because of the time is uh, they're saying. Uh, summertime and is we are so busy but finger crossed I managed my double glazed guy mm -hmm. so house will be secure uh, front door and the back door house will be secure later on maybe I can do my DIY work as well yeah. so you're quite handy I've not done before but I can you know can manage Braham did have his reasons for gambling so much on the house. He wants his kids to go to a better school and the access to the motorway means it's much handier for his locum work as a hospital pharmacist technician. Sometimes, yeah, working in Oxford, London, Manchester and uh, sometimes working Leeds. So just quick on the M6 and drive and come back home. You've had a few setbacks, Braham, but I can't wait to see what you do. Best okay. of luck. Thank you very much. Thank you. My heart breaks for Braham. He didn't view this property and he didn't read the legal pack and he's paid for it dearly. And I'm also worried that that 15 grand budget won't cut it. But I'm hopeful that he can make this into a great family home for himself. In fact, I'm rooting for him. I'm sure you are too. You can find out what happens later in the show. So we've seen one property, but how does it compare to our other two? Yeah, were they dealt a royal flush or a bad hand? I think it's time to see how the cards fell. Now we're heading back to Rains Park in London, where I saw a three-bedroom maisonette. A very spacious three-bedroom maisonette at that. The decor was tired, but the rooms were huge until you got towards the back of the flat. Now, it all starts to go a little bit wrong at this point, though, because this is the kitchen, and as you can see, it is absolutely tiny. There was also one other not-so-tiny problem. 
This house comes with a really short lease, 33 years. What does it matter? Well, in 33 years, if you don't do something about it, it's not your house anymore. So there would be negotiations to be had with the freeholder here. Purchasing the property, short lease and all, for 387000 was Amal. She planned on having discussions to extend the lease, while son Omar, who handily has a building company, was going to get stuck in with the graft. Hopefully, this mother and son pairing would be a great team once they ironed out the kinks, that is. So what's the budget? I don't know. Maybe, do you think we could do it for under 10? Under 10? Uh, no, Seven? not at all. If you're replumbing and stuff, I no, think... No, I'm not replumbing. I'm I, not replumbing. You'll have to change some of the toys. I'll, ch I'll change the bathroom because it's leaking already. Uh, uh, okay. I think, Ten, you're not buying a handbag. I think around 20 to 25. Right. Uh, and that's for the first the, version. First stage. Do you buy expensive handbags? <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes you do. <laughs> They planned on doing a simple refurb before renting it out for a few years. So now we're heading back five months later to see if Amal and Omar have got this renovation in the bag. They certainly have, and it's had more than a quick refurb. Once they had a closer look at the electrics, plumbing and the state of the old plaster, Omar made the decision that in the long run, it was best to just get everything back to brick and start again. As it is a leasehold flat, they had to come to a compromise with the freeholder on things such as the flooring, so there's no wooden floors, but instead these lovely fresh carpets. But they didn't have to settle when it came to layout. This new open plan kitchen and living area works really well. So this is lovely, isn't it, now, with a dining reception? Is, yeah, it was a good idea keeping this as a reception room and just making it more modern. So we just created an opening, giving the, an open plan kitchen with the reception room, just a more friendlier vibe. And it's also overlooking the garden and so that a mother doesn't feel isolated when she's cooking for the kids or for a dinner party. You can chat away, have a glass of wine with your guests or your family. So it's good. As this is now the living area, the former front room has become the master bedroom. It is a fantastic size and also has a large cupboard and just down the hall is this smaller but charming third bedroom. Amal and Omar have finished within the six-month timescale they originally set for stage two, but unfortunately they haven't yet been able to reach an agreement to extend the lease, but negotiations are ongoing. This mother and son team must have learnt quite a few lessons on their first property venture. Never work with your mum again. <laughs> I've actually enjoyed working with him because I see him more often. A mother always likes to see her son. Uh -huh. Yes, yes, she does. I, I, I enjoyed it. It's, it's always quite interesting working with your mum. Uh, but it, it was pleasant. Uh, the makeover of the whole flat went pretty smoothly. I think we're all pretty happy with it, and hopefully we can rent it and then sell it for a good price. As they've chosen to go with the full refurb, they've spent their maximum budget of £50,000 on all the work. So it's time to see if it's all been worth it. We've asked two local estate agents along for their opinion. First, let's hear from the agent who saw it last time. I think from the last time that I saw it, the owners have done a really good job. It's been done up to a really good standard. I think leaving the kitchen in this room but open planning it was a really good idea. It looks very good. So main selling points of the property, I'd say that you know the catchment area for the schools is going to be great. The location is always going to be key, um, but it's going to be very attractive to families because you've got the three proper bedrooms, space for the family to sort of spread out, and, and the, the sociable sort of kitchen diner family room at the back. The garden's always going to be a big pull as well. 
and uh, yeah, being in a quiet cul-de-sac, again, is, is, is a big pull for young families. The agents like it, but will Amal's investment of £437,000 have been worth it? I would suggest a sales asking price of six hundred and twenty five to six hundred and fifty thousand pounds. If we put this property on the market, we would put it on the market for six hundred and fifty thousand pounds. That's what we had in mind actually. Yes. Wasn't it? Yeah. Well I I, I would have thought six sixty, six seventy. At the moment, the £650,000 figure gives her £213,000 profit before taxes, fees and, crucially in this case, the cost of extending the lease. But as they're not going to sell for a couple of years, rental figures are the name of the game and the agents agreed the flat could achieve £1,700 to £1,800 per calendar month. I say mean, anything between £1,800 and £1,900 is quite a fair price for, for this kind of area. Um... Yeah. And you rent it for a year or 18 months and you recoup all of your refurbishment costs. Yeah, I suppose so. it's a win-win so. situation for it you. It is a win-win situation, so you can even yes. be more generous towards me, <laughs> which is nice. I'm sure she'll be generous, Omar, now she has that almost 5% yield. So, will this mum and son team be working together again? It, it was a pleasurable experience working with my mum. First project I've ever done with with a family member, uh, media family especially. Uh, so why not? More to yes. come. The more the better, yeah. And since filming, Amal has managed to negotiate a lease extension of 99 years at a cost of £170,000. We return now to the Erdington district of Birmingham, where earlier I saw this three-bedroom semi. It had been extended at the front, but I wasn't happy with what I found. This retainer wall's not doing much retaining, and that could really affect the house. And yes, this is what's known in the subsidence world as a belter off a crack. Often, movement in foundations can be indicated by diagonal cracks. The inside filled me with even more dread. Missing floorboards, woodworm, broken floor tiles, polystyrene ceiling tiles, and it got worse in what was left of the kitchen. Everything's been taken out. Even the copper pipes, somebody's taken them, but even they didn't want that really dirty cooker and fridge. Upstairs, the devastation continued. It was clear this would be a refurbishment on a grand scale and explained the guide price of a relatively low 25 grand. It was bought for considerably more by Braham, who is a locum pharmacist technician. Not only did he pay 87 grand for this troublesome lot, he was hit with an additional 10,000 pounds in fees. Even worse, he had taken a chance and hadn't seen the inside of the house. Despite his shock at the state of it, he had a plan and a very tight 15 grand budget. The first plan is our to take off all the plasters, ripping that everything's double glaze all the windows and lamp, uh, double glaze uh, doors and everything will be fitted. Center heating pipes and the refurbishing electric wiring and uh, kitchen, we're going to put that brand new kitchen. Downstairs bathroom, we are making downstairs bathroom um, fully and then upstairs new bathroom. There's a lot to do. Have you done this sort of thing before? No, this is my first time. Ooh, talk about jumping in at the deep end and Braham had originally thought eight weeks would be enough to complete. We're back just over five months later to see how things have worked out by taking a chance here. OK, the old downstairs bathroom off the kitchen is a bit of a work in progress. But the kitchen is bigger. It's been knocked through into the outhouse and the old toilet area. It now is functional with some integrated appliances and most important, a central heating boiler. I know you know there's something here, but you cannot get past the fear. And fear is what most novice developers would feel when entering the old lounge. Now it has calming neutral tones, courtesy of Braham's wife Anita's interior design efforts. Upstairs, the wallpaper pine boarding effect has gone too. The landing's also been extended too to incorporate a shower room. Baby, take a chance on me. Baby, take a chance on me. 
The addition of the upstairs facilities has added much appeal, whilst taking a little space from the bedroom, which is still a reasonably sized double. Across the landing at the back of the house is the smallest of the three bedrooms. Baby, take a chance on me. And next door, the larger back bedroom. But like me, I'm sure you're all wondering, what about the crack? We've done underpinning the concrete, uh, this side and the back side, all that kitchens uh, and that uh, bathrooms with the damp proof membrane. Uh, we've done that all with that uh, solid concrete and this is the biggest, biggest, biggest huge job was that here. Yeah. Hardest job. Another expensive job was moving the sewer drain from the old toilet to run down the left hand side of the building. It meant a complete reworking. I found one plumber and he was saying, OK, I'm happy to do that, but he was, his price was double price from the t uh, other people's. So, but I was happy to pay because there was nobody wanted to do this. Braham's work at distant hospitals meant he found it difficult to project manage and keep an eye on tradesmen, so he found a radical solution. I gave up my full-time job and took the part-time job, which is in the evening. So 5 till uh, 11, I was just doing that part-time job. So basically, I was in the daytime, I was watching them as well over here. I'd been really worried about the amount of work needed and how far his 15 grand budget could stretch. He'd used 10 grand of his original refurbishment budget for those fees. So how has this panned out? OK, that's gone up to huge, huge money, yeah. It's gone 10 grand above, i uh, gone above. So that's 25,000 on top of the extra 10,000 and the still work to do. Basically, inside, I've, I've mostly finished for that living standard. Outside driveways, left as well, back garden to cleaning as well. So basically, I'm looking my uh, budget, which is, I think, 10, uh, 10 grand more. So. That is uh, my target. So his estimated total, when all said and done, will be £132,000. This includes the purchase price, extra fees and increased budget. Time to call in the professionals. He's made a start. Um, and I think that once he's, uh, how should I say, finished it all off to maybe a little bit better standard and got it all completely done, um, it would make a nice family home. The kitchen downstairs is a good size. I think he's opened that up quite nicely. Uh, traditionally, these properties would have a very small kitchen. There would have been an outside toilet, and it's a bit of a mishmash downstairs. So that really is a good feature of this property. We know in Braham's case, it's about being a home for his family. But what would it sell for when complete? I would envisage the property being on the market in the region of £125,000. And this went to the market, I would estimate that this would fetch in the region of £125,000. A potential small loss, but Braham feels there's still value to be added. At this stage, it was 120 and 125 something like that, which I know that's why I didn't spend more money. Uh, but if I'd done front driveway, back garden and something that, then it will raise, yeah, that's fine, yeah. Braham hopes to move the family in in a couple of weeks when the internal works are complete. So, was it worth taking a chance on this unseen property? I'm glad, yeah, uh, that I, I just gone to that auction and I bought this, yeah. We hope you've enjoyed the show and maybe we've even inspired you to go to your local property auction. Mm, yes, well, we'll have plenty more renovation stories for you next time. Yeah, join us here on Homes Under the Hammer soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.